Welcome back to Let's Play Mass Effect. We're at Novaria, we're in that secret lab where we just dispatched with Matriarch Benezia. Uh, pretty big deal, and that fight was just as tough as I expected <laughs> it to be, even though we're level 30. Um, it still was pretty challenging for me, which was good. Um, we're almost done here. If we looked at the journal, we would say that what we have to do really is leave here, but um, it actually won't let us leave. We have to actually go over and have a chat with that creature over there. That is the Rachni Queen. Um, yeah, Daniel is uh, bracing himself. He doesn't like the idea of having to go and talk with that queen, but uh, talk we must, so let's go do it. Where are my squad mates to inform me of this occurrence here? <laughs> the commander is rising up from the dead. Caden, Rex, is that you? Is that your footsteps I hear? This one serves as our voice. We cannot sing, not in these low spaces. Your musics are colorless. And your language translates very, in a very unique way. We filled you with enough plasma to pop a tank. This vessel is at the edge, yet she struggles. You cannot see her magnificence. We are breathing on the embers. We are the mother. We sing for those left behind. The children you thought silenced. We are Rachni. Did you order your people to kill the science team? No. We were locked away here. The children are beyond our songs. They have been... lost to silence. You are not in harmony with those who hoped to control us. What will you sing? Will you release us? Are we... To fade away once more. There are acid tanks rigged up on that thing. Set them off. Millions of my ancestors died to put these things down. Don't let them come back. Commander, there's some old grudges in the galaxy. Grudges humans should stay out of. If we kill her, we kill the entire race. Your companions hear the truth. You have the power to free us or return our people to the silence of memory. If I let you live, would you attack other races again? No, we... I do not know what happened in the war. We only heard discordance, songs the color of oily shadows. We would seek a hidden place to teach our children harmony. If they understand, Perhaps we would return. Way back on, on Eden Prime, I made a mention of songs the color of oily shadows while looking at the people who had been burned to a crisp there. And uh, in context with the way she presented it here, it seems like it's a fit to me that, uh, that that maybe is what that actually means. Don't know. Are you a survivor from the war? A clone? We do not know. We were only an egg, hearing Mother cry in our dreams. A tone from space hushed one voice after another. It forced the singers to resonate with its own sour yellow note. Then we awoke in this place, the last echo of those who came out from the singing planet. The sky is silent. So because we've already been to the hot labs, we can actually ask her about whether uh, we could have saved them. You could have calmed them if I hadn't set off the purge? 
No. Our minds are not as yours. We can only learn to sing in harmony. Without a mother, children are lost to silence. You should not sing of them in gray and violet. We would have still them ourselves. Okay, that's all we can ask of her. We have to now make a decision, a somewhat monumental decision here. Um, one thing this game does very well, I think, is is give you the sense of that you are making major decisions here, and that you know that it's setting things up for potential that this will have an effect later. Now, I don't know to what extent this will have an effect later, but uh, oh man. Daniel is, um, I mean, I've been setting him up as a character who has quirks and things, and one of his quirks is that he has a somewhat of a um, phobic type reaction to bugs, to insects in general. And uh, yet he obviously learned to get along with keepers, even to the point where he can get up close and scan them. But of course they were pretty inert. Uh, these rachni have been extraordinarily hostile. This is really the only one who has you know, seemed less than a killing machine. And, y and yet, you know, I'm being asked basically to trust that uh, this creature is going to do what she says, and that is to basically re resurrect the, the species, but this time in a way that's harmonious. And, I mean, she's using a lot of color and musical references here, and so if she, when she says she's going to teach her children harmony, well, I mean, it's not really clear what that means. I mean, one interpretation could be that she's going to teach that, the, that this new you know, Rachni 2.0 is going to be one that isn't going to be so um, isolationist and, you know, violently so. But how do you know? I mean, one thing we do know is that they seem to reproduce quite fast, you know, at, at the scale of tribbles. <laughs> um, and... So if you make the wrong decision here, I mean, are you condemning the galaxy to another 300 years of war? <sighs> uh, all right. I'm sorry. I, I just can't, I can't make, I can't just release you. Make your peace with the galaxy. The Rachni are a dead race. Commander, genocide is way beyond the scope of our mandate here. Our mandate is whatever's necessary. If you don't have the guts to follow through, quit. Is our kind so frightening? You would seek our silence if you cannot muffle our songs? If you cannot have us as your obedient claws? I don't stand with Binary Helix and their de you know, desire to have them as obedient claws. Obviously that's what they were doing, but... Uh, no, even fully free to to try again to I just now the thing that bothers me here I mean I can say okay I've changed my mind but Daniel you know it does not make this decision lightly and certainly and, and, and the, the notion that he's going to sound like a dick making you know saying this I don't like this is not Daniel speaking this is the game inserting these words so but yeah he, he stands by this this decision this time, stay dead. We will not embrace the great silence. Oi. <laughs> yeah, 25 Renegade points for that decision and uh, multiplier 20 on that assignment. Um, ay, ay, ay. One thing that would have changed that for me if, um, not changed it, I mean, one thing that would have made this even more uh, poignant in a sense is if prior to her death that she had started making sounds like some sounds we're going to hear later. Um, that 
we're going to assume are associated with the song sung by Rachni. Um, but she doesn't. She makes that same squealing sound there. I mean, she's she's condemned, obviously. She's not going to live much longer. Well, why would you sing a pleasant song? But even if you set her free, she will squeal like that. And um, so you never get to hear her make um, the sounds that we'll hear elsewhere, which is really too bad. Anyway, we are down to the very last sh oops, shreds of things to do here in Novaria. There's basically three crates to pick up. Alright, let's take a peek at the journal. One of those should be done now. This is the main assignment, which is still not marked complete. And notice this is still saying that we should try to capture Major Epinesi, even though she's truly gone. So that really doesn't update it. The one that did change, obviously, is this. No, uh, this one. In the heart of Rift Station, you found the last queen of an insect race thought extinct a thousand years ago. You decided her race was too dangerous to let live and killed her. Now, that write up, I kind of prefer because it isn't dickish. Um, it does seem to sum up Daniel's true feelings a little bit better. But, and also let's take one peek real quick at the amount of XP I got. 57178. Just in case any of you are holding out, hope that my 50 multiplier XP reward will come after we actually take the tram away and the, that, assign, that final bit of that assignment is marked complete. I'm pretty sure it isn't going to change. So yes, we should be at level 31. <laughs> but we're not, and that's alright. We will get by. The truth is, no matter what you do in this game, unless you cheat, you can't get to level 60. So it, the whole min-max process that I keep putting myself through, in the end, really isn't that important. But anyway. Alright, we're done. What's our next move, Commander? Head for the Mew Relay? The Mew Relay could link to dozens of systems. Unless we know exactly where Saren's going, we'd just be wasting our time. The Commander's right. We can't rush off blind. We need more to go on. <laughs> okay. What about Liara Tassoni? The, the Matriarch's daughter. Isn't she some kind of expert on the Protheans? Yeah, right. Her mother was working for Saren. I bet she is, too. But Nezia helped us in the end. Maybe Liara will, too. At the very least, we should head for the Artemis Tau Cluster to find her. Who put you in charge? Did the commander resign when I wasn't looking? Here's a somewhat surprising thing. Um, notice who I'm looking at when I make this, uh, when, I, when I make this response. I give the orders around here. I'll decide where we go next. Is that clear? Of course, Shepard. I was only trying to help. Oh, Tali, I wasn't, I wasn't all on her Jew. <laughs> Uh, this is a tough mission. We're all on edge. Everyone go get some rest. Crew, dismissed. Novaria report is away, Commander. You want me to patch you through to the Council? So yes, at the end of each story mission, we will have we will all gather in here um, and have a little debrief, and then we can call the Council. Uh, yes, we absolutely want to do this. Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. Is this report accurate, Commander? You found Rachni on Novaria? Found them and wiped them out. Do you take pleasure from committing genocide, Shepard? So glad that it was the Turian counselor asking me that question. Depends on the species, Turian. Commander, you are addressing a member of the council. You will show the proper respect. <laughs> did, do I, did I see spittle coming out of your mouth just then? Whoops. And we're out. Yeah, that's a pretty satisfying conclusion there to the uh, story mission. And let's take a peek. Yeah, we didn't get any XP at all on our way out there. And yeah, that mission's now marked complete. 
though is it? Look at this. Matriarch Benezia, top advisor to Saren is on Novera. If you can capture it, it's likely she has inside Druid's plans. So this, yeah, this never gets updated. That's why I don't get my 50 multiplier XP reward because the game, when you go to the hot labs first, it just, it misses this. So anyway, I'm done ranting about that. All right, so these story missions kind of tend to be big deals to me. And um, I always think it's, Daniel's definitely going to want to collect thoughts from people after we complete them. Of course, uh, if there's places we can collect codex as well, we're, we're happy to do that. I'm never going to say no to XP. Um, I'm actually not going to talk to Joker just yet. In fact, I'm going to sneak out. Because, uh, I mean, the thing that we don't have to endure when you finish Novaria is you don't have to actually drive all the way back and then walk all the way back to the ship. The game kind of does that for you. Um, but we're still here at Novaria, so let's actually... I'm going to jump back out real quick. In fact, what I'm going to do is just go to Opultz to see what he's got in the store. Interior pressure with exterior All right, so there was absolutely nothing in the store worth buying, so we didn't buy anything. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. All right, now it makes a little more sense Locked. to... The commanding officer is aboard. Exo Presley stands relieved. Thank you, Normandy VI. So, yeah, I mean, now that we are just about to depart Novaria, we can talk to everybody. Boy, am I glad to be off of Novaria. I don't know which was worse, the cold or the corporations. One will freeze your balls off, and the other will sell them out from under you. With all due respect, Commander. I have to go. All right, see you. All right, so all the events of Novaria are swirling about in my mind, and I'm thinking about what happened there. Let's chat with everybody. Hey, Caden. Anything you need, Commander? What's your opinion on the last mission? Killing Saren's, uh, what was Benezzi anyway? Second in command? Advisor? Anyway, it should set him back a bit. I guess we'll be the ones to tell Dr. Tassoni. It's a hell of a thing to drop on her. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Any opinion on the Rachni? Off the record? If we had the option, I'd as soon have left it to the Council. We weren't out here during the Rachni War. I'm not sure we have any business getting involved. Well, I don't know about that, but I agree. Uh, the Council should have had a say in this. And what do you want to bet that the Council would have uh, split on this? They would not have been unanimous in this decision whether to let them go or to kill them off. Um, you would have had a minority report situation possibly brewing there. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? Is this an official evaluation, Commander? Or off the record? Elenko, when it's just you and me, you can consider it off the record. That's a generous attitude. Okay. I think there's something wrong with all this. This Saren is looking for a lost mass relay to who knows where, but we can't get backup from the Council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. The Council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but... I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the Council should see this coming. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in Bot. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. Seems like you beat the odds. How many didn't make it? Out of a hundred, maybe sixty have no effect. Thirty suffer adverse effects, little things like brain cancer. The other ten show enough ability to augment with implants. Not always permanent, though. Not like the cancer. Next thing you know, you're out on jump zero. And how's a kid supposed to deal with that? A station at the edge of human space. Jump zero is Gagarin station, right? What's it like? 
Yeah, that's the official name. Biggest and farthest facility we had for decades. Right on the termination shock, the outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do, though. It was a research platform then, and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. Then you must have had plenty of time to get to know each other. Yeah, we'd sit around and bowl every night after dinner, play cards or network games. There was this girl named Rana who had a little circle grow up around her. She was from Turkey. Her family was very rich, but she was smart and charming as hell. Beautiful, but not stuck up about it. I think you'd have liked her. Sounds like she was special to you. She was. Maybe she felt the same, but things never felt together. Training, you know. You know of any intentional exposures for certain? No one knows. Doesn't mean they didn't happen. As big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down accidentals. It was different then. No one knew the potential, so there wasn't a lot of regulation. Anything Kinetics did was gold. I'm not saying they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but in retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. And after being <laughs> caught up with what Binary Helix was up to, then none of this surprises me. Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the vids. But that's my own baggage, Commander. No bearing on this. Alenko, there's no regulation that says you can't be friends with your commander. I appreciate that, Commander. I just don't want you to think that I'm a, a whiner. Besides, I've got my past squared away. Alright. Nice chat with Caden. That is the first block of his story unfolding there. I'm gonna drop in here real quick, just in case. Nope, didn't need any. It's always a good idea to be in the habit of topping off, though. Alright, Rex, what's going on? So, we've got Saren on the run. Do we? I guess we probably do. If, uh, he probably knows Benetti's been dispatched, so... It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good. He's rotten. To the core. I could tell as soon as I met him. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would've if I thought it was important. I think I'd like to hear about it just the same. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. Didn't even wait to get paid. What kind of cargo was the freighter carrying? What was Saren after? I don't know. All I saw on that ship was food and medical supplies. There were some basic weapons, but nothing big. If there was anything of value on that ship, I didn't see it. That's why I didn't mention it sooner. 
Whose ship was it? It was a Volus trading vessel. Big one. Lots of guards. But they were no match for us. <laughs> so what Krogan considers a Volus trading vessel is massive. Uh, so what the heck are the Volus trading when they do this? I mean, I thought they were just, you know, they, they dealt with money, you know, things that are paper, basically. So I have no idea. Also, this whole mystery of what Saren was doing is a bit of a... Uh, it's a bit unsolved, it seems to me. That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week. Every damn one. Well... So... <laughs> not that we didn't know Saren was a bad guy already. So long, Rex. Shepard. Alright, a little more lore there. Uh, we picked up some stuff. Let me go ahead and real quickly run through my squad, see if there's anything I can put on them. Okay, not too much change there. I can just swap some guns around. Gave Tali a better shotgun, Rex a better um, sniper rifle. Nothing too major there. Alright. Hey, Ashley, I'm gonna actually do a quick save here, because, uh, Somewhat important conversation will occur here. One of the things uh, you can do here, uh, since you're a male ship, is uh, you can uh, make some decisions about whether you want to be, um, if you want the relationship path with Ashley to be available to you, um, at least on, on, on the way, or if you want to shut down entirely at this point. Uh, you can actually make that decision here. Commander, you have a minute to talk. All right, so the question I kind of have sometimes is, and it's kind of funny to do this, is how renegade can you be with, with Ashley and still preserve a relationship and not screw it up? And uh, so I'm going to kind of be showing that, but, but I'll be skipping the parts where we're kind of, I don't know, there's some places where I don't really like the way Shepard comes, comes across. So It's not normal for an enlisted to speak informally with the commander. I figured since the crew was so small, you might be more permissive. I mean, that helmsman of yours. Most places, he'd be at Captain's Mast every day. I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? You don't trust their motives because they're not human. This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. All right, so this is the fast track to shutting down a relationship with Ashley by telling her she's out of line. But it also shuts down the conversation, and you can't ever resume it. So there's a lot of stuff you end up missing here. And there's other ways to shut down the relationship if you want to hear more about what she has to say. You can select this renegade if you want, but I just don't like agreeing with her. There's some places where I would agree with her in her anti-alien stance, so... I'm not going to lock them in the sleeper pods for the whole trip, Williams. I'd be more comfortable if they didn't have access to engineering and the CIC. We, humanity, I mean, have to learn to rely on ourselves. I trust that's not insubordination, I hear. No, sir. That's patriotism. As noble as the council members seem now, if their backs are against the wall, they'll abandon us. And again, if you pick this one, then you're basically agreeing with Ashley, so... I don't see that as inevitable. Look, if you're fighting a bear, and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. As much as you love your dog, it isn't human. It's not racism, not really. Members of their species will always be more important to them than humans are. Now here's a kind of annoying little place here. If you ask her this question up here at the Paragon stage, uh, you're basically going to avoid making any mention of the Terra Firma Party, and therefore you won't get the Terra Firma Party Codex entry. <laughs> Whereas down here in the neutral and renegade uh, options, you do end up talking about terra firma and you do get the codex entry. So only for you min-maxers like me, um, just avoid the paragon up here. It's really silly that that happens, but... This is an alliance warship, not the parliament floor. If you're Earth first, vote for the terra firma party. Terra firma is a pack of jackals. The founders had ideals. These days they just play off xenophobia and bigotry. I hope my reasons are more rational. 
my father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. I guess we just tend to think of Earth's interests as our own. It doesn't sound like you've worked with aliens before. No, sir. Mainly I've been groundside, part of the surface garrison forces. I did get a rotation on a space station for training. Every Marine a rifleman, every rifleman ZG certified. These two, Paragon and Neutral, are the same response. Uh, this one's unique here in Renegade, and it's a little dickish, but you actually, even here, you don't uh, shut down the relationship. That's odd. Your record is spotless and your technical scores are exemplary. You should be serving with the fleet. Anyway, that's why I haven't served with many aliens, Commander. I come from a military family, too. My parents were both Navy. Anybody in your family we might know? Couldn't say, Commander. We probably have a lot in common. You join up to carry on the tradition? You get a little extra dialogue if you go to the left here, but uh, I actually kind of like this neutral response. I don't think they meant to start a family tradition, but after 16 years on ships and stations, how could I spend my life on the ground? You're lucky. I spent most of my career as groundside garrison. Yeah, it's a slight bit of insight there into Shepard, and you don't actually get the option to pick it later if you pick the on the left side first. So, all right, we've already picked that. Uh, all right, so the just shut up. This this is the place where you can shut down the relationship with Ashley, um, and do it. I mean, what you. What you'll do is say to her, this mission is difficult enough without you picking fights with aliens, and for whatever reason, that she just decides that you're not really interested in her. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of odd in that way, because you really don't talk about a relationship with her or not. But anyway, so if, yeah, if you want to pursue, or at least have that option to pursue a not relationship, you have to pick one of these two here. All right. I can see where your concerns are coming from, Williams. But this is a multilateral mission. You're going to have to work with aliens, like it or not. It won't be a problem, Commander. You say jump, I say how high. You tell me to kiss a Torian, I'll ask which cheek. So yeah, if we had told her to shut up, we wouldn't get any of these options. We would be skipping down to the spot where, well, after this, um, I'll, I'll show you what's different about it. Would you kiss anyone I ordered you to? That depends, sir. If you ordered me to kiss a superior officer, that would be a violation of the regs concerning fraternization. That would make it an illegal order. I'd be required to decline and relieve you of command. Sir. <laughs> okay, so, so even though we, we kind of are starting now to pursue a relationship with Ashley, we're not actually locked in. There are, uh, when we talk to her again after the next story mission, uh, there'll be other places where we can um, gently, maybe, maybe not so gently, shut down the relationship possibilities. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm... Basically, what I'm trying to say is I'm not yet saying publicly I'm pursuing a relationship with Ashley. I'm leaving that option open. This is where we can ask her about the next mission. But one of the ways you can tell whether you're in a relationship or not is both the way the conversation ends when you say goodbye here. And we'll hear that soon. But also there's another option right up here um, where it basically is can we talk. Uh, I think it's, yeah, can we talk is what it says. And for whatever reason, as long as you're in a relationship, that doesn't show up here in the dialogue wheel. It does when you're out of the relationship. So, <laughs> and so far, I haven't seen any place where that hasn't been true. So it seems to be uh, a good sign. So anyway, we can ask her about the mission. What's your opinion on the last mission? You mean the Rachni, right? They were dangerous, Commander. They proved that 2,000 years ago. You made the right decision, sir. You know, when we pick up that Asari scientist, we'll have to tell her we killed her mom. That's gonna suck. Just saying, Commander. Yeah, again, I agree with that. And, uh, so... We'll talk later, Williams. Looking forward to it, sir. So yes, we got the codex entry for the terraforming party there. So yeah, I do like Ashley a lot. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm leaving it open as an option to uh, decide whether I want to romance her or not. So anyway, hey, Garrus. Oh, this is a silly little bug. I don't know what causes this. Sometimes you have to come back later and talk to him. Right, let me peek in the store real quick. Looking for supplies? Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. Yeah, we do want that pistol, but I don't have enough money.
Hey, Tali. Oh, hello, Shepard. Are you okay? I don't know. Your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me, especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving. And the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? I find it rather peaceful. Don't worry, you'll get used to it. But it's more than just the silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. Sounds like the pilgrimage isn't just about finding resources for the fleet. Maybe it's about teaching you to appreciate your people and culture. You're probably right. We Quarians spend our whole lives traveling. But really, we never leave home. The pilgrimage has given me a whole new perspective on our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. You do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Seren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. Imagine if Tali had uh, talked that slowly during our first chat with her. <laughs> it would have taken an extra ten minutes. I should go. See you later. Alright. I really lament that I don't use Tali more often. I really like running around with her. But uh, as a fellow engineer, I just, I don't know, I just don't like doubling up on her skills. Also, I was kind of tongue-tied over there. I, for some reason, I couldn't think of what I wanted to say, but one of the things you may have noticed when we were chatting with Ashley near the end there, when we were asking about the mission, is that she agreed with me about the right to, you know, about the decision I made with Arachni. That doesn't really surprise me. But in a few places in this game where you make a decision, like, I think, I think, it may have been Ashley that I noticed this actually happening on, um, where I made one decision and she said that was the right call. And then I made the opposite decision in another playthrough and she again made, said that that was the right call. But in this case, when we're talking about the Rachni, um, she will say that that was the wrong decision if uh, I let if I let the Rachni go. So that strikes me as uh, I like that kind of continuity in this game. So, all right. So I think that wraps up uh, Novaria entirely now. Um, although there is one little thing we can do still, and we can actually do that later. But I actually am still in the Horse of Nebula, and therefore there's one more thing I want to do there. So let's. Uh, Let's, find, let's check out the other system here. Alright, so this doesn't update because we've done anything there. The other system in this cluster is Strenus. Alright, so there's some planets here. Let's take a peek. Young Thoral. Shrouded by a thick atmosphere of complex hydrocarbons, Young Thoral has never been fully mapped. The surface is hot and completely covered by a global ocean of liquid hydrocarbons. There are indications of primitive organic life developing deep within the global ocean. And it's pretty warm there. Your scan uncovered a, an ancient deep space probe slowly orbiting. Young Thoral. Tali brought it on board, dismantled it, and found a League of One medallion hidden in its payload. I think this is the first one of these we found, so that should be yet another collection assignment that's just started. Antitara. Antitara is a hyd standard hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of ammonia. Hydrocarbons in the atmosphere lend it a distinct brown tint. So in other words, not very nice <laughs> to look at, I guess. This looks like a little guy here, Trillin. Trillin is a lifeless rock with a trace atmosphere of xenon and krypton. Its surface contains large amounts of iron and magnesium silicates. Due to heavily cratered terrain, starships are discouraged from landing. A Salarian religious cult claims that a certain pattern of overlapping craters in the southern hemisphere resembles their goddess. <laughs> uh, 
So yes, I actually did squint at this picture to see if I could see it, but uh, apparently we're not actually looking at the goddess there. It'd be kind of neat if there was there. Thessalo... Thessalogon? Thessalogon? <laughs> I really have trouble with these. Standard hydrogen helium gas giant. This planet's atmosphere is tinted blue by trace quantities of methane. Alright, and yeah, this is one of the only... This is kind of a tough one. You can see the little sparkle there. This is the only one of these sparkles that occurs outside of a um, uh, asteroid belt, so you kind of have to notice it. Anyway, this is the MSV Majesty. You may remember this. We were talking to a guy named Gareth on the Citadel, who, whose brother's ship was this name, so it looks like we may have found it. The Majesty is a Kowloon-class modular conveyor of human design. The ship is a derelict. All compartments are exposed to space, and the fusion plant is leaking. The damage is consistent with ship-mounted mass accelerator fire. And it's registered to Mr. Uh, Captain Willem, so that's probably... Assuming now this is Gareth's brother. A faint trail of radioactive particles, possibly exhaust from the from a sublight nuclear engine drive, leads toward the nearby planet of Zawin. So yeah, if we had not seen this, and we had come to Zawin first, we would have been presented with a planet that would have a cold hazard, but yet no land button, which is kind of a smallish, subtle type clue that's, um, hey, if, uh, if we would be facing conditions, then why can't we land? And then you'd find out. Anyway, Zawin is a, has a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and ethane. The surface is frozen and mostly composed of cobalt with deposits of copper. Planet site conditions are hazardous, with constant ice storms racking the surface. Yeah, it's really cold here. Alright, and this is a really tough mission, so yeah, I need my biotic team once again here. Alright, we've arrived on a little side quest here, and uh, yeah, I'm going to defer this to the next episode, of course. Let's drop a save. Alright, we'll pick up this story from right here, next time.